so let us say become envious so asuya means envy they envy the supreme lord who is situated in both their own body and the bodies of others and what do they do is they do pradvishantaha they become blasphemous so again summarizing they take shelter of ahankara that false ego balam strength darpa pride kama lust krodha anger they take shelter of all these negative traits and they start becoming envious of the supreme lord who is situated in their own bodies and in the bodies of others and they become blasphemous against the real religion a demonic person being always against god's supremacy he does not like to believe in the scriptures that's why we are briefly discussing why they don't believe in scriptures because if they believe in scriptures they have to follow it so there that's one of the reasons why they say i don't believe in shastras because they don't know they, can, they don't, don't have to follow but for them so um, the demonic person is envious of both scriptures and existence of the supreme personality of god it this is caused by so called prestige and accumulation of wealth and strength he does not know that the present life is a preparation for the next life so again we were discussing yesterday about the transmigration of soul why they don't believe in that because again if they believe in that they have to believe in the law of karma so whatever actions they do it will cause reaction they have to believe in all that so they they you know play safe the thing they are playing safe by not believing on other but just because i don't believe in it doesn't mean it doesn't happen not knowing this he is actually envious of his own self as well as as well as of others he commits violence on other bodies and on his own body he does not care for the supreme control of the personality of godhead because he has no knowledge being envious of the scriptures and the supreme personality of godhead he puts forward false arguments against the existence of god and denies the scriptural authority so they come up with some foolish arguments of why to deny the scriptural authority he thinks himself independent and powerful in every action he thinks that since no one can equal him in strength power or wealth he can act in any way and no one can stop him so we also have seen that you know how they always you know try to cut, cut down their enemies if he has an enemy who might check the advancement of his sensual activities he makes plans to cut him down by his own power so the supervisor sort of summarizing the demonic qualities what we have seen till now so now krishna says what is the destination of such demonic people what happens tanaham dvishata kruran samsareshu naradhaman kshipami ajasrama shubhan asuri shveva yonishu so there are two things krishna is telling one is tanaham dvishata kruran samsareshu naradhaman so such envious krura prabhat translates as mischievous such envious and mischievous demons who are naradhama who are the lowest of men right what krishna does to them kshipa me i put i throw i cast kshipa me ajasram you know ajasra means forever i perpetually proper translates i perpetually cast into the what ashubha ashubha means all the inauspicious life forms asuris asuri shveva yonishu all the demoniac species of life okay so krishna says i am going to throw them into inauspicious a demoniac species of life perpetually in this verse it is clearly indicated that placing of a particular individual soul in a particular body is the prerogative of the supreme will the demonic person may not agree to accept the supremacy of the lord and it is a fact that he may act according to his own whims but his next birth will depend upon the decision of the supreme person of god it and not on himself In the Shrimad Bhagavatam, third canto, it stated that an individual soul, after his death, is put into the womb of a mother, where he gets a particular type of body under the supervision of superior power. Therefore, 
in the material existence we find so many species of life animals insects men and so on all are arranged by the superior, superior power they are not accidental as for the demoniac it is clearly said here that they are perpetually put into the wombs of demons and thus they continue to be envious the lowest of mankind so now we have to understand one important point here is it that krishna uh, tries to take sort of revenge against the demons because demons are envious of krishna is it so the answer is no it is not the case so basically what is the problem with demons the problem with demons is that it's not that they are demoniac and they they keep uh, to themselves they harm the society they harm other men other people other animals basically they disturb the uh, the you know stable order and peace in society by committing various sinful and criminal activities and when they do that it's like you know a law of court law of court doesn't really have any kind of enmity towards criminals but the law of court has to you know keep uh, maintain justice right it cannot favor the criminal by denying uh, justice to the victim right so hence there is like a court based on the law it will decide whether a person has committed crime or not and if he has committed crime he will be punished right similarly when krishna say i am going to cast him it's just like the statement of a judge who tells that i am going to put this criminal uh, into prison for a lifetime when a judge says like that what does it mean is it that the judge has any kind of enmity towards the criminal no it's basically it means that uh, based on the crime done by the criminal the judge is awarding the justice right so and ultimately judge has to order without the order of judge it will not happen but judge will not order because he has enmity with the criminal judge orders because that's that's the way that's the law of the land right similarly the system is designed such a way that you do bad karma you will be suffering the results of bad karma so a particular person if he really wants to avoid all the suffering he always has a choice now when you say krishna says kshipami ajastram ashuvan forever he is thrown so what is the meaning of forever he is thrown so basically he is demoted to a lower life form and as long as he does not willingly transform himself there is no chance of him coming up but sometimes when by chance he comes into association of devotees or whatever right then he can right uh, possibly he is given an opportunity but again a person since he is demoniac by nature and tendency because he is uh, you know under the control of demoniac uh, you know, qualities so what will happen is he will continue to de- uh, deny the association so hence he will not take any good help given by lord or anybody so that what does it mean it means he is going to stay in demoniac species forever in that sense it is not that lord doesn't want them to advance but those people themselves they don't want to advance they don't accept uh, any favor shown by lord or his devotees so that's a problem with demons not with the lord continuing the same theme asuri yoni ma panna mudha janmani janmani mam ap ृष्ण mam aprapya eva kondaya tato yanti adhamam gati madhamam gati means they keep going to abominable type of existence lower and lower and lower life forms and uh, you know uh, hellish life hellish suffering so all that is they are going to choose that right it is known that proper translates as a purpose in the big first line in itself it is known that god is all merciful but here we find that god is never merciful to the demoniac so the same question we try to answer probably celebrating it is clearly stated that the demoniac people life after life are put into the wombs of similar demons and not achieving the mercy of the supreme lord they go down and down so that at last they achieve bodies like those of cats dogs hawks it is clearly stated that such demons have practically no chance of receiving the mercy of god at any stage of their life 
In the Vedas also it is stated that such persons gradually sink to become dogs and hawks. It may be then argued in this connection that God should not be advertised as all merciful. If he is not merciful to such demons, some people may argue like that. In answer to this question, in the Vedanta Sutra, we find that Supreme Lord has no hatred for anyone. The placing of the asuras, the demons, in the lowest status of life is simply another feature of his mercy. Why? Prabhupada answers, sometimes the asuras are killed by Supreme Lord, but this killing is also good for them. For in the Vedic literature, we find that anyone who is killed by the Supreme Lord becomes liberated. So for such demons, who, who, for whom there is no hope of, you know, they, they coming out of all that shackles, Krishna at once delivers them by killing them. So that is also mercy of Krishna. There are inst instances in history of many asuras, Ravana, Kamsa, Hiranyakashipu, to whom the Lord appeared in various incarnations just to kill them. Therefore, God's mercy is, is shown to the asuras if they are fortunate enough to be killed by him. Prabhupada says, very rarely it happens because Lord's avatar is not so frequent in a given universe, right? He keeps appearing in different universes, but in a given universe, it doesn't happen so frequently. And uh, as a result, uh, people, the opportunity for people to get delivered by getting killed by Lord is uh, not so high. But that is one of the mercy of Lord. So another way we can say is, is, is uh, mercy shown through devotees. So even devotees try to preach. Of course, most 99.9% .9 of the demons, they don't accept it. They reject it. But again, if they somehow by chance they accept it, there is again an opportunity for them to get delivered. But it is really very difficult. Now, Krishna goes on to say, what is this door to hell? What leads to the hell? What type of qualities lead to hell? And how to overcome that? Trividham narakas yedam dwaram nashanam atmanaha kamam krodham kamam krodhas kamaha krodhas tatha loba tasma de tatrayam tyajet. So, what led to such demonic mentality? Krishna is telling that it's because of these three that is, lust, anger, and greed. Kam krodha loba Muhammad Masriya. We say, right? Six out of the first three kama krodha loba. These are the three which are categorized by Krishna as three gates leading to hell. Lust, anger and greed. So, every sane man should give it up because they destroy the soul. And a destruction of soul doesn't mean no soul is uh, you know, killed or something. No, because you cannot kill the soul. Destruction means basically degradation. Lower, lower life forms. The beginning of demonic life is described herein. One tries to satisfy his lust. And when he cannot satisfy his lust, anger and greed arise. And even if you satisfy, greed, greed continues. Because greed is something, it's like, you know, burning fire. And you put ghee, that is sense objects. Sense objects are like ghee. Okay, put it. What will happen to fire? It will keep growing. So, greed can never be satisfied by fulfilling it. And if you don't uh, provide what he wants, uh, then he will get anger. Okay. A sane man who does not want to glide down to the species of demoniac life must try to give up these three enemies, which can kill the self to such an extent that there will be no possibility of liberation from this material entanglement. That is true. Somebody goes so deep down, right? It is practically impossible for them to come out of this you know, material entanglement. Very rare cases like how the Lord comes in an avatar and delivers. So those times maybe they will get delivered but otherwise practically impossible. Etair vimukta kaunteya tamo dvarai stribhir naraha acharatyatmana shreyaha tato yati param gatim Now how to progress? Now Krishna in last three verses for this chapter he briefly tells the importance of overcoming these three gates to hell and what is the process. Okay. Etair vimuktaha kaunte ya tamo dvarais tribhir naraha. Etair means from these vimuktaha being liberated. The man who has escaped these three gates 
of hell o son of kunti what he will do he will acharati atmanah shreyah he will do acts which are conducive for self realization atmanah shreyah means conducive for uh, uh, realizing one's self tato yati param and hence so he will go to the other way you take shelter of these three uh, uh, demoniac you know, propensities you will go down you give these three up you will start going up so it's as simple as that the process to you know go towards spiritual uh, world is give up lust anger and greed uh, develop love for god develop bhakti so that should be our focus proper rights in purport one should be very careful of these three enemies to human life lust anger and greed the more a person is freed from lust anger and greed the more his existence becomes pure then he can follow the rules and regulations and join in the vedic literature so this is very important part how one will advance when we give gives up lust anger and greed because when he gives up lust anger and greed uh, he see why people don't accept scriptures because it put restrictions it doesn't allow people to fulfill their lust indiscriminately so hence people that say uh, let me not follow scriptures because if follow scriptures yeah, there is a uh, restriction for the unlimited uh, fulfillment of say, sense gratification so hence let me deny script scriptures that's what people think but when they give up this lust what will happen is yeah, they don't have any such kind of you know uh, crazy uh, uh, ideas for sense gratification because they have given up lust uh, they have reduced it you can say giving it up is a very high stage they have reduced their lust so their mind is ready Uh, in a peaceful state to accept the teachings of the shastras then he can follow the rules and regulations enjoined in the vedic literature by following the regulatory principles of human life one gradually raises himself to the platform of spiritual realization if one is so fortunate by such practice to rise to the platform of krishna consciousness then success is guaranteed for him so here also krishna says right tato yati param gatim success is guaranteed in the vedic literature the ways of action reaction are prescribed to enable one to come to the stage of purification the whole method is based on giving up lust anger greed by cultivating knowledge of this process one can be elevated to the highest position of self realization this self realization is perfected in the process yeah perfection of self realization is bhakti yoga uh, the example to be given is see you have to see yourself you need a light source you cannot see yourself without a light source not possible right so that source of light is like sun you go to sun you will see yourself also you will see sun also you will see yourself also similarly to understand to actual do self realization to know what is atma who are you to know you actually you need to actually understand krishna god realization leads to self realization or serving krishna will enable you to realize yourself this self realization is perfected in devotion service in that devotion service the liberation of the conditioned soul is guaranteed therefore according to the vedic system there are instituted the four orders of life four status of life that is varnashrama called the caste system and the spiritual order system so again the word caste system here we understand as varnas these are different rules and regulations for different castes or divisions of society which we see saw in the first three verses of this chapter and if a person is able to follow them he will be automatically raised to the highest platform of spiritual realization then he can have liberation without a doubt so here purport emphasizing while practicing bhakti yoga also we cannot deny the natural qualities what should be present according to our occupation and according to our uh, status social uh, or spiritual status right uh, if you are grahastha you cannot deny the duties of a grahastha and if you are from a particular varna you you cannot you know uh, basically fail to develop those qualities we have to endeavor to develop those qualities which are conducive to our varna for example if you are a businessman uh, you are supposed to you know be clean uh, try to avoid uh, any kind of cheating and also do some kind of charity right these are qualities which are important so like this for every varna if you are a teacher so then there are a host of qualities which you have to develop you have to be simple simple straight forward and you have to have that compassion so there are so many qualities which you need to develop 
and if you are in the administration or in the in the military etc then you need to have those qualities like uh, that uh, courage bravery must be there right and take being responsible so i think in uh, chapter 18 i believe yeah chapter 18 krishna elaborately describes what are the qualities for each varna okay so based on our occupational job whatever we are doing right uh, we can try to develop uh, this uh, relevant qualities so that will help us um to uh, reduce the karmic load okay and it will streamline us uh, prepare our mind because then your mind will be peaceful to uh, sit and you know learn the shastric principles which can adapt it in life and develop uh, purity which leads to liberation okay so why do the demons are suffering hmm? because they are bound by lust anger and greed hmm? and propal already in the purport says that you give up lust anger greed then you will follow shastras so but what do demons do they take shelter of lust anger greed so what do they do by default they will break the shastric principles which is highlighted in the next verse yash shastra vidhi mutrujya vartate kama karatah na sa siddhim avapnoti na sukham na param gatim so basically what do they do is they vartate kama karakah they do actions based on lust okay and since they are pursuing their own lust many times the shastric restrictions right have to be broken so shastra vidhim utsrujya by disregarding or discarding scriptural injunctions vartate kamakartaha they act whimsically in lust prapadra translates so what is the consequence of such action na sa siddhim avapati they will not develop any perfection na sukham they will not get any happiness na param gatim forget about you know going out of the metal uh, basically getting liberation or whatever uh, no higher destination so but as described before the shastra vidhi or the direction of the shastra is given to different caste and orders in the first three verses everyone is expected to follow these rules and regulations if one does not follow them and acts whimsically according to lust greed desire then he will never be perfect in his life in other words a man may theoretically know all these things but if he does not apply them in his own life then he is known to be as the lowest of mankind just knowing these verses is not enough one has to adopt them in the human form of life a living unit is expected to be sane and to follow the regulations given for elevating his life to the highest platform but if he does not follow them then he degrades himself propad adds one more level that even if you just follow rules regulations but ultimately it does not come to the stage of understanding krishna then that knowledge is of no use and even if he accepts the existence of god but he will not engage in the service then again the is efforts are spoiled therefore one should gradually raise himself to the platform of krishna consciousness and devotional service it's not enough just to that mai bhagwan ko manta hu i believe in god it's not enough you have to serve god you have to follow the injunctions of the shastras it is then and there that he can attain the highest perfection stage not otherwise again the word kamakarata is very significant a person who knowingly violates the rules acts in lust he knows that this is forbidden but still he acts this call acting whimsically he knows that something should uh, should be done but he will not do it and he uh, that is called whimsical such persons are destined to be condemned by the supreme law the human life is especially meant for purifying one's existence and one who does not follow the rules and regulations he can't purify himself and hence can't attain the real stage of happiness so what should we do the devotees should do the following what is that 
तस्मात् शास्त्रम् प्रमाणम् ते कार्या कार्य व्यवस्थितो नात्वा शास्त्र विधानोक्तम् कर्म कर्तुमि हारहसी so here the shastra what is referred in this verse it is actually the Vedanta Sutra so Vedanta Sutra is what is the essence of all the Vedic knowledge and the commentary of Vedanta Sutra is Bhagavatam so we can in principle say that shastra refers to Vedanta Sutra which is nothing but Bhagavatam Srimad Bhagavatam Tasmat Shastra Pramanam Te the evidence Karya akarya. What is to be done? What is not to be done? We decide that based on Shastra Pramana. Gnatva Shastra Vidhanoktam. After knowing what is the rules and regulation, what we should do? Karmam kartum irharasi. One should act so that he can get elevated. Okay. So basically, go to the Shastras. Get the Pramana of our what is to be done, what is not to be done. And then, after knowing what is to be done, do it. Okay? That is a process. Krishna is suggesting. As stated in the 15th chapter, all the rules and regulations of the Vedas are meant for knowing Krishna. Veda is cha sarvaihi ahameva vidya. If one understands Krishna from the Bhagavad Gita and becomes situated in Krishna consciousness, engaging himself in devotional service, he has reached the highest perfection of knowledge offered by the Vedic literature. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu made this process very easy. He asked people simply to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And to engage in the devotional service of the Lord and eat the remnants of foodstuff offered to the deity. One who is directly engaged in all these devotional activities is to be understood as having studied all the Vedic literature. He has come to the conclusion perfectly. Of course, for the ordinary persons who are not in Krishna consciousness or who are not engaged in devotional service, what is to be done and what is not to be done must be decided by the injunctions of the Veda. One should act accordingly without any argument. This is called following the principles of Shastra. Shastra is without the four principal defects that is visible to the conditioned soul. That is imperfect senses. Like all our five senses, they are limited. They can only grasp information uh, which are, is limited. Like for example, eyes can only see something uh, the, whose light wavelength is between 400 to 700 nanometers. Only that can be seen. Beyond that, it cannot be seen. We will classify it as ultraviolet or infrared. Right? So like that, even for uh, ears, it's the noise the decibel must be between 20 hertz and uh, 20,000 hertz. Only between that range. Lower or higher, it cannot. So like that, each of our senses has limitation. That is imperfect senses. Second is the propensity for cheating. So, the conditioned soul, he, if he wants to get something, he will try to get it by hook or crook. So, he may end up doing cheating. It takes. So, knowingly or unknowingly, when we do some action, we do some mistakes. For example, you're doing some addition or subtraction multiplication. Right? We end up committing some mistakes. So, that is natural, right? And so uncertainty of being illusioned. So being illusioned means trying to acquire knowledge through our senses and through our experiences through the senses. So what will happen is that since our senses are not purified and cannot receive information absolutely, right? So we tend to um, give wrong judgments. So there are many pictures if you, you would have seen, right? Uh, where the object appears to be moving, but it's not moving. Or if you see the, in the summer, uh, if you are traveling on a road and you see the distance, right? You see that there's some water, water body in the far, but it is not there. Uh, 
So like the, the senses have a tendency to get illusion. And because of which we really can't uh, you know, conclude what is right and what is real. So these are all some limitations of conditions so for is writing. So these four principle defects in conditioned life disqualify one from putting forth rules regulations. Therefore, the rules and regulations as described in the Shastra being above these defects are accepted without alteration by all great saints, acharyas and great souls. In India, there are many parties of spiritual understanding generally classified as two, impersonalist and personalist. Both of them, however, lead their lives according to the principles of the Vedas. So for example, the Shankara school of thought and the Vaishnava school of thought. Both of them lead their life according to the principles of the Vedas. Without following the principles of the Shastras, one cannot elevate himself to the perfectional stage. One who actually therefore understands the purport of the Shastras is considered fortunate. So it's very difficult because so many people, very few people are interested to learn scriptures. And among those few people who are interested to learn, Right? There are so many people who are, who are saying that I know Bhagavad Gita, I'll offer you a course, I'll teach you, I'll teach that. But to come to the exact conclusion of the scriptures as presented by the bona fide Acharya Parampara, right? very few people have access to that. Of course, because of Prabhupada, the access has increased all over the world now, in the last 40-50 years. But apart from that, the access was very limited. Right? So, Prabhupada says that it's very fortunate. If somebody has that access, this is very rare, right? They are very fortunate. In human society, aversion to the principles of understanding the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the cause of all fall downs. That is the greatest offense of human life. Because once you disregard Supreme Lord, you will disregard all the rules and regulations as given by Supreme Lord in the Vedas. Then you start committing blunder, crimes and what not. Right, so much of animal killing, so much of abortions, which causes terrible amount of pain to the living beings. Right, so you're basically denying a life to a baby which is not even born. So it's very, very sinful. Because of committing such sinful acts, lot of natural calamities. Just yesterday, I think you all are aware how uh, Turkey has a lot of earthquake, Turkey, Syria, and so many other countries. So these natural calamities are, you know, result are just, you know, the way nature is uh, reacting through uh, uh, Adi, out of the three tapatrayas, Adi Daivik Tapa, right? Adi Bhautik is other living entities, Adi Daivik means natural forces. Adi Hatmik is internal. Since Adi Daivik Tapa, which is coming uh, to all of us, is an indication that you know things are going heavy. Okay. So that is the greatest offense of human life. Therefore, Maya, the material energy of the Supreme Person of Godhead, is always giving us trouble in the shape of threefold miseries. Just now we were discussing about Tapatraya. So Maya gives that uh, threefold miseries. This metal energy is constituted of the three modes of metal nature. One has to raise in himself at least the modes of goodness. So basically, Prabhupada is telling that if you come to a mode of goodness, so when you say coming to a mode of goodness, it's not that you know you are 100% into goodness. It's not really possible so easily to 100% come to a mode of goodness. But endeavoring, adopting some practices of goodness in our life. Right? So once we start doing that, naturally the mind becomes conducive to accept the scriptural injunctions. Without raising oneself, to mode of goodness, one remains in ignorance and passion, which are causes of demonic life. So ignorance and passion usually pulls down. If somebody is in pure passion, they stay in the middle. That's what in the 14th chapter we saw. But most often they not. If somebody enters passion, they'll also enter ignorance. Without the pull from goodness, nobody can stay in passion. That we have seen, right? How the three modes are always there. You know, tussle. Sometimes goodness wins, sometimes passion wins. So usually like there is a pull down into ignorance. So there is some shade of ignorance mixed in to passion. So based on that, they will come down. One remains ignorance and passion, which are the causes of demoniac life. Those in the modes of passion ignorance, they deride the scriptures, deride the holy man. 
derive the proper understanding of the supreme personality of god they disobey the instructions of the spiritual master and they do not care for the regulations of the scriptures in spite of hearing the glories of devotional service they are not attracted thus they manufacture their own way of elevation which will not work like ravana was trying to build a staircase to heaven right all those things will not work these are some of the defects of human society which lead to the demoniac status of life if however one is able to be guided by a proper and bona fide spiritual master who can lead one to the path of elevation to the higher stages then one's life becomes successful so basically uh, we have to take shelter of the good association which will keep us in mode of goodness a good association will inspire us to adopt lifestyle which helps us to cultivate mode of goodness and that makes our mind conducive to accept uh, the teachings of the shastras teachings of the acharyas and adopt them in our life and once we start doing that we will start our kama krodha and loba keeps getting down because our passion goes down and uh, eventually uh, we will start getting elevated to uh, you know per- perfection of life that's how prabhat concludes that uh, which can lead one to the path of elevation their one's life becomes successful the sense the uh, purpose of the purpose to 16th chapter of shrimad bhagavad gita in the matter of the divine and demoniac natures so just briefly to summarize uh, in this chapter we started with the uh, divine qualities and this uh, 26 divine qualities according to the varna and ashrama krishna explains uh, summarizes the divine qualities and then from verse number 4 krishna starts uh, describing about the demoniac qualities and demoniac tendencies and then he will also talk about what are the consequences of following demoniac lifestyle especially what we saw today that uh, they will kshipami ajastrama shubhan asuri sveva yonishu and they go down to different different hellish planets and lower life forms what is the cause of such uh, you know um, demoniac mentality the cause is trividham narakasyedham dwaram nasham atmanah kamah krodhastha lobah tasmar etatrem so one has to give up kama krodh and lobah so prabhat writes if you want to give up that you have to develop mode of goodness lifestyle okay then to conclude the chat discussion here krishna says the people who give up uh, scriptural injunctions because of whimsically acting in lust they don't achieve any perfection at the same time what a good soul does is to do what is uh, to decide upon what is to be done and what is not to be done he always consults shastras and acharyas develops right understanding and then acts upon it and thus by faithfully regularly following acharyas and the teachings of the shastras he will get elevated uh towards perfection of life okay so that summarily concludes our discussion on the 16th chapter now i think it's time for us to discuss about any question answer and basically we'll have some kind of discussion of of you know summarily what you have understood from this chapter how the chapter benefited to evolve your understanding right you can share that okay we can do both because we have some time we have about 12 minutes time left hari krishna in this last uh, shloka hmm. uh, ordinary persons who are not in krishna consciousness hmm. uh, who are not engaged in devotional service hmm. what is to be is not to be done must be decided by injunctions of the vedas yes so i i did not understand this thing uh, what you did not understand who are not krishna conscious hmm. 
what what they need to do is uh, they must ha uh... ah, ha ha okay 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 so basically what prabha is trying to say is that if like for example people who are fully devoted to krishna so what will happen is that their hearts are already pure and whatever thoughts they get it's mainly about devotional service right they are they are they are purified from the, all the lower modes like you know lust anger and greed so hence it's not that they have to consult shastras and you know engage in good activities because their heart is pure now their desires are pure they will only engage in krishna consciousness right so for them there is no need for them to you know day in and day out consult shastras and decide upon what is to be done what is not done because they are they are so pure they are already elevated hmm so it's like for example if somebody is an established lawyer who has you know uh, experience of 25 30 years for him he may not most often they not he may not need to go and open the book and read the laws because most of it will always like by default he would know it but a new student of law right who has just now completed or who is still studying he must consult the law books time and again and understand the law right similarly those who are not in a higher consciousness of you know being fully krishna conscious ordinary people right who are still not so purified for them they have to consult shastras if they have get some doubt whether this should be done or not they have to consult shastras if they cannot read shastras and understand they have to consult learned people who are situated properly in shastric understanding consult them learn from them what is to be done what is not to be done and then engage it yes sir here shastras means uh, trying to make them krishna conscious or uh, what to be sorry shastras mention of shastras is there hmm. so is it making uh, making them krishna conscious fully uh, krishna conscious or understanding our philosophy or what to be yeah 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 you, you can always you know so even in bhagavad gita if you see there are karma yoga gnana yoga bhakti yoga all are there based on the level of person we can give uh that level of advice from the shastra now shastra when you say shastra it is not that it has only one solution for all types of problems of course the ultimate solution is to adopt fully krishna conscious that's true but in order to solve uh, an immediate problem at hand there are different solutions suggested in shastra right Uh, so we can go to particular shlokas, particular verses, a particular book also. Every solution may not be immediately solved in Bhagavad Gita. Sometimes some essence is given, but not the detailed solution, right? Uh, so we may have to consult, say, Ayurvedic book for that matter. If you want some health tips, if you want some tips on uh, basically social life, how to conduct, etc. You may have to consult books like Manu Samhita, which we are seeing. uh in 16 chapter itself proposal is quoting mana samhita so like this there are different books available right and there is according to the nature of the person level of the person you may have to offer solutions according to okay uh and of course whenever possible wherever possible offering direct krishna conscious solution and um, with confidence right if you can do it and if that helps a person it's wonderful thank you brother Hare Krishna Prabhu ji dhanyavad prabhu Hare Krishna Prabhu ji I am not sure whether I should ask this question because yeah. this is related to the OBA open book assessment okay uh, our next exam so yeah. uh, one question is there which is related to chapter 14 and 16 hmm. in which it is asked that uh, give the from the bhagavad gita chapter 14 and 16 give the uh, aspects of his mission prabhupada's aspects of mission discussed in discuss in your own way i'll read it exactly select statements from prabhupada's purpose of chapter 14 and 16 that reflect aspects of his mission and discuss in your own words the significance of these aspects for iskon's future ah, so okay. this nature of demoniac and this how how we have to express it i'm a little bit not understanding the question properly today we saw i am giving some hints 
Today only we saw, right? Prabhupada is explaining about uh, in the last uh, sloka uh, two, Prabhupada is explaining about, you know, uh, human society is divided according to four uh, so, uh, social and four spiritual status and all. Right? We saw that in the today's sloka. Last or last part of the sloka, it is mentioned. How we are supposed to uh, align accordingly, develop those qualities, like that Prabhupada has mentioned. Right? Read those verses again. Read the purport again. You will know which are the exact. So that's an indication of, of something what we need to develop in our mission. Right? For example, to establish one ashram system is what one of them unfulfilled mission of Prabhupada. We, we all know that. Right? So here Prabhupada is giving a hint that is required. So when you say follow Shastra, it means you establish, you establish one ashram and follow the teachings which is meant for your varana and your ashram. Right. So that is one of the uh, things. So I'm just giving an example. So that we saw in today's chapter. So like that, you go to the, through the verses and locate wherever possible. Like for example, one more thing uh, is how you know you have to spread the message of Chaitanya. Uh, uh, basically to make people dev- uh, give up all the lower three modes. All the Kama, Kruda, Lopanda. So like that. Hmm? So you have to go to the puppets and then I say solution Prabhupada is offering whatever society is offering. Pick those statements. Connect it. So here the, for the for this particular uh, I mean uh, issue or a problem Prabhupada is offering this solution in the puppets which is offered by our society. Right? So connect like that. And then you will develop the answer. So it should be your own. The best would be to, to develop your own understanding of it. Instead of you know, trying to uh, make uh, write somebody else's understanding. OBA is always meant for writing your own understanding. Most of the times it's not an absolute answer. It's like an essay writing. As long as you whatever you write is within uh, like what is actually there in the Bhagavad Gita. Right? And usually you are, you are limited to certain number of words. How many words? 500 words. Huh? Each question. 900. Yeah, 900 words. Yeah, but so like that. So you can elaborate. So basically OBA, what it will do is it will make you uh, uh, go through these slokas and look at them in a particular angle. The, uh, in the angle of the question. Now we have read in one particular angle. But once you know that this is an OBA question which I need to answer, you will scan each of the verses and purpose according to this particular angle. And when you do that, you will become aware of that angle in these chapters. Otherwise, you would not know that. You got Actually, idea. I was marking down with the pencil what related to this question only. But yeah. I was a little confused where uh, Krishna's statements, we don't have to include in that, right? You can. So, so for example, as I told you, it's Krishna is telling, you know, follow Shastras, right? Shastras, Shastra, Pramanam, Te, Karya, Karyam. Krishna is saying you have to decide what is to be done, what is not to be done based on the Shastra Pramana. And Prabhupada in the Prabhupada is explaining that, you know, for each Varana and Ashrama, there is a do's and don'ts. According to our Varana status and Varana, our Ashrama, where we are currently situated in, we have to adopt these teachings. Right? Like that. Okay. Yes, Prabhupada. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay.